something we're really passionate about with Interflow is we actually provide a consulting service. We actually consult you and how to run your business because a lot of these guys are roofers or electricians or sales guys. Our service we provide to our clients, we will actually consult them because we want them to be around. We want to double the amount of solar every single year to hit President Biden's goals in 2030. We have to have very healthy, strong solar installer companies. We have to. Hello and welcome to the Solar Maverick podcast, where solar meets entrepreneurship and experience. I'm your host, Benoit Thanjan, so let's get into it. Hi, this is Benoit, your host of the Solar Maverick podcast. I'm excited to have Spencer. He is the co-founder of Enerflow. Enerflow is innovating the solar industry, and it's a purpose-built foundation. They're on a mission to help democratize solar energy and spread it across the globe. What's amazing, what they've done is basically created a platform to simplify the solar sales process through technology. Spencer is more of the sales and solar guy, and his friend Pat is more of the tech guy, and they created Enerflow in 2019. Now, a few years later, Enerflow has grown its team and customer base fastly, already processing $4 billion in solar transactions to date. I'm so excited to have you on the podcast, Spencer. You know, we've been talking about this for a while. Back in Boston with Nate Giovanelli, who's been on the podcast several times and works with Enerflow since February. Spencer, welcome to the Solar Maverick podcast. Thank you. I'm happy to have you here. So I did the high level description of your company and a little bit about your background. Can you talk about it? It was interesting to hear how Vivint Solar didn't want to hire you as a residential sales guy. I thought from my experience working at Solar City and Tesla, like basically most people got hired, especially someone as well-spoken as you. I wouldn't think it would be an issue. Well, I appreciate that. It's very kind of you. What was happening is I was at Vivint at the time, Vivint Eve, and I was in their NIS department, phone sales, and I was crushing it. And they just started solar and I wanted to actually go sell solar. But in 2011, 2012, they weren't like really accepting anybody because they had so many things they had to figure out still. So I was like, I want to go apply. They're like, no, I'm not taking anybody. So I think I like officially rejected from them. They just wouldn't let me apply. We wouldn't let anybody apply. And then I finally, I went down 2013. It's chance, good dude. And, and uh, met him. And normally in that space, you know, people get like signing bonuses and all this, but it was so grassroots and just kind of ghetto. So they were like, yeah, I was like, so chance, like what kind of signing bonus am I going to get? And he's like, oh, we don't do signing bonuses. And I was like, okay, whatever. I was one of the few people that recruited myself. I didn't have anybody recruit me to solar. I was just like, this is something I want to do. So then I asked him to teach me or send me to the, the guy who was their best rep. I was like, who's your best rep? And he's like, Reno Man and Paul. This is like, oh, I'm true with him. So I went out to San Jose office. It was five weeks before my first son was supposed to be born. I flew out there and my wife, I was like, I shouldn't go. She's like, no, totally go. Totally go. It's fine. And I was like, no, I should stay here. She's like, no, this is what we're going to do with careers. You need to go do this. And she's like, babies always come late on the first one. We're totally full. I was there 24 hours. Illinois. By the way, I got my first sale within two hours, knocking my very first door. Got my first sale. It was a mid, it was 680 credit score. If you're listening to this call, people, you didn't get paid at Vivint for mid. Unless it was a seven higher credit score, you didn't get paid. So my uh, first deal that I actually sold, I got nothing on. But I still did all the stuff because like, I sold him something. I wanted to have good service, but he actually didn't get paid on it, which is wild day. People go down to like 600. And I was getting paid $200 a kilowatt. And so just so different than what it is today. But the next day during their correlation, when we're at our meetings, I get a phone call with where I was like, oh, by the way, how's your day going? By the way, I'm in emergency room. I'm going to see section. So I was like, what? Missed my son's, his only birth. I guess you could only have one. <laughs> uh, I missed his birth. Got there about eight hours later. We came five weeks premature in the NICU for about 10 days, but uh, he was all good. He's, he's awesome now. But yeah, she just had some, some issues. He came early. So I missed that. So that's my family, my son. I missed his birth because of solar. Hopefully your wife is fine with it. And that's great well, to hear that they're both home. They always did get us. Leah, she brings it up whenever she does. <laughs> um, Anytime you get into an argument. Oh yeah. She remember that one time when we had our child and you were there? I was, <laughs> Thanks. Like you told me to go, but that doesn't matter. Yeah. Then I started with Reno, Mendenhall, Dan Down. I was down there and opened up the Orange County office. It was, I think, seventh office. And I did like 115 site surveys in my first like three and a half, four months, like sold that many accounts. And it was so funny because when back then, people were like, we had a slick. We didn't have any software. We had a sales slick. It was a picture of some rando's house. And on the other side, we have a picture of a landlord, a picture of a bill. And that's how we sold. And we sold lights out. So it's kind of funny today where reps are like, hey, I need all this tech. I need to be able to add and move repanels and all this stuff. Like, <laughs> but I feel like, yeah, you got too pampered. 
the newer age sales reps. But yeah, we went out there. I did a ton, but I only got three installs out of those 115 because the process was so crappy. We had a phenomenal sales team, but the fulfillment process was garbage. And it was taking us eight months to get permits back in these certain areas. And I was in Fountain Valley at the time in SoCal and it was just messed up. So like always thinking of why can't we have software do this? Or why can't we have a concierge team do that? The answer was always to sell more. And there is not a better sales organization and culture than Vivid when it comes to direct sales. Like they're the best in the world. And I learned a lot of wonderful things there, but I also learned what not to do and where the holes were. And that's kind of where Interflow was born. Then I jumped into the IoT space with SkyDrop. It's a weather-based irrigation controller to like a Nest thermostat, but for the outside of your home, managing your plants and your watering and learn more of the technology and the hardware space there. And they got introduced a lot of energy efficiency companies and solar companies and a bunch of other groups and got to see them more of the business side. I bought into that company and then left in 2018 and started Interflow. Actually, in 2018, we started with HVAC and installation. What I wanted to do is I wanted to get all the homes that had solar already. And I wanted to help them get rid of zero out the true because they either panel degradation or they weren't sold a system that produced enough offset. Went really heavy to that for about a year. Then we just found out the installation contractors are super cheap. Because <laughs> 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 they do everything on the napkins and spreadsheets and whiteboards. I actually didn't start Interflow Benoit to like make it as a software company. So I started it in the beginning because I was like, I just need five closers. I'm tired of working for other people. I want five closers. I'll feed them amazing solar deals that we can do energy efficiency on. And I'm making a million bucks a year and I'm pulling it good, right? And buy some real estate and that's it. He happens to actually not only is the co-founder, but he actually is my friend. He was my friend first. And we would go to lunch all the time. And the idea was kind of born into a sushi on fire, Mid Street, Huntington Beach by the pier. <laughs> We just started chatting about it. I was like, hey, Pat, I just waited. He was CTO at a company at the time. And I was like, I just waited. I want to be able to take some pictures, write some stuff on the pictures. And I want to be able to save this graph. And that's it. And I was like, don't spend more than 10 hours. Well, four years later, here we are. But he would code at night from nine to like one in the morning. And then I'd go out and during the day and use my phone and go sell people and sell them insulation and reach back. And then even started selling solar. And then a couple of my buddies saw it. And they're like, hey, can I use that? And I was like, uh, yeah. Uh, I kind of took that to him because I was doing this all by myself during the day. I was just me to spend a show for about nine months. And then Pat came along full time in March of 2018. That's where we got our first investment. Ever since then, it's just about finding product market fit. And our vision has grown since and it's really solidified now. But in the beginning, it was just, who do we want to be? How do we want to help? Because we saw that the space was so fragmented. There's apps for everything or manual processes. And, and that creates this duration, which increases price, which increases follow, which increases bad experience. Duration is a swear word in our industry or increase of duration, mm -hmm. I should say. And so we try to bring all of these apps together in one house and just have one experience, but they can all talk to each other. And no one was doing that at the time. And I don't really think anyone's I really doing that now, except for us in the meaningful way that we're tackling it. There's some great tools out there that work on sales process, Solo or Snowfly or Aurora's got something and solar graph and there's a bunch of great tools. But when it comes to talking with other tools and creating an ecosystem where you can create your own platform and do what you want, there was nothing and still really isn't anything. And so we made Interflow. That's how it got started. We were just at a tech summit with all of our tech team at Fort Little Oregon just earlier this week. We talked about how a year ago today, we had four employees. It was me, Pat, Joe, who was on our tech team. Wow. And he created Optimus and then Michael, who's like a BDR. And that was it. And we were working out of our buddy's closet. And so we were actually working in this closet and he had boxes everywhere. And Pat and I rented the closet for 500 bucks a month. And I had a little desk in the corner. He had another desk in the corner. We had a whiteboard that was like this big. That was it. And then we had boxes and storage stuff all around us. And we worked in his closet and we stayed there for a year. We kind of joke, but like after a year, we came out of the closet together and got our own. <laughs> But yeah, it was a fun time, but that's where we grew. That's where we started SPI. We pivoted in July of 2019 and we said, hey, you know what, Spencer, your core competency is in solar, so let's do it. So then we went to SPI and we were hoping to get five contractors interested and we walked away with over 80 that were in. And that was the beginning of Interflow. So we actually, our first solar partner went live in February of 2020 before the pandemic hit. And then it was just crazy, but we were built from the ground up for virtual sales. So when the pandemic hit, we grew by over 1500% because of what we had. And so it was a real hard time for a lot of people and it was a real blessing for us. And it really was a catalyst to help us get mass adoption and get to where we are today. And so that's kind of how we got started. And here we are, we have 70 something employees and a bunch of contractors. We're hiring 40 more right now. So we're going, having fun. That's an amazing story. And it's amazing how quickly 
it happened. And that's a testament to the hard work and creativity of adding value to your partners, right? Just a couple things that I was thinking about. Can you go into more detail specifically, like what the platform is offering to the different partners or dealers or residential installers? Yeah, what we do is we primarily focus on installers. And I want an installer to have the same type of tools that a Sunrun or a, or a Vivint. The mom and pop shops that do five, ten installs a month will have the same tools, same access to products, same pricing. We focus on installers, but we have a lot of big sales dealers that work with us, Vivint being one of them. All the Vivint solar deals are done on our platform. They've installed over 50 megs this year and have another 150 probably in the queue. So, I mean, they're crushing it and uh, we're fortunate to be a part of that. We started that program with them. It was two people, it was me and Reno, and then we just built out from there. It's, it's been a lot of fun, but uh, Interflow is lead the PTO powered by your favorite tool. You can use our tools or you can use your own tool. But the idea is you get glass on the ring faster than any other process by working with us. More rep, better rep retention, better pull through rates, better customer experience. And so what we do, think of us kind of like uh, Costco, Walmart. Yeah. Walmart's got the Quake brand, Costco's got the Kirkland brand, right? But we have our own Interflow tools, but that doesn't mean you can't use Solo. You can use our proposal or you can use Solo's proposal, or you can use our scheduling tool or you can use Set Order, which isn't very good. It doesn't change how we charge you. So we just say, hey, welcome to you, but no, I know we're like, hey, and it's kind of an interesting pitch that we have because we don't have to switch you off of another product. I'll come to you like, well, no, you're doing 80 installs a month. So you must be doing something right, something good. What I want to do is we want to figure out all the stuff that you're doing right and we'll build around that and enhance it. The stuff you're not doing or don't want to do or don't know how to do, then you know, it'll take over that for you and like Legos. So think of Interflow like a two foot by one foot by one foot Lego. We're made up on purpose of a thousand smaller Legos. So when we work with you, we snap them all apart. And then we can snap those Legos onto a Salesforce or a Job Nimbus or a Monday.com or a Solo or an Aurora or whatever. Like we can snap one anything that's an API. And then we build that process. So we have the platform. There's no two layer clothes that it's safe. Like if you go use an Aurora or a Solo or anybody else, they got amazing products out of the box, but they're all basically the same. We have no two that are the same. So we build the process that's unique to you, your sales culture, your fulfillment culture, because there's things that differentiate you from the other contractors. We want to make sure that we espouse that and make a living, breathing platform because products are always going to change. You know, Aurora might buy a bunch of companies like they bought Gilliesco. Solo comes out with some other cool stuff. There's m and and all this stuff. Like our platform, you work with Interplay, you build your platform. But then you could drop in and out any tool that you want on your platform. As the, those tools will change over time. There'll be consolidation. There'll be more competition. And that's what we do. So we have more integration than anybody in the industry. That's what Interflow is. It's built so you can finance integrations. I mean, documents, like everything you can imagine you can do in one spot. Yeah. Your sales or your fulfillment. We have installers in 45 states. We have a massive network. And we're going to do $4 billion of solar jobs just this year. We've already passed two and a half billion already. So we're on almost to three. Yeah, we're having a lot of fun. Yeah, that's a great explanation of it. Is there like a subscription from the dealer network to use your software? How do you make money from this? Is it simple? You're getting on podcast. <laughs> yeah. They pay me a lot after we get off. <laughs> yeah, well, so well, I'm still negotiating equity for sponsorship. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We have a flat fee. So it's like uh, going to Sizzler, Chuck or Rim or whatever. But hopefully the food's better. A fee you get unlimited interflow. You can use all of our tools. That fee is dependent upon the size of your business. So if you're a small business, you pay less. If you're a large business, you pay more. But for sure, actually comparable to everything else they do. And then we actually have the customer pay for it. We build. If you want to think about it like a per contract cost, we don't charge that way. But per contract, we will build in 40 to $75 per contract. The customer pays for their rack ping or for their, you know, their panels or whatever. They pay for Interflow for you. And so it's actually no cost to the installer if we build it in that way, but it's a flat fee. It's pretty simple. And for sales dealers and installers like, you probably have like six, 700 sales dealers on Interflow. Most of them don't pay for Interflow. The installer pays for it. <laughs> it's really awakening to hear that. And I think that's a pretty smart business model to do, obviously dependent on size and the number of people. One of the other things that I thought was interesting is your backgrounds in sales. Obviously, what you did with Vivint was very sales oriented. Then you worked for a different type of company where you got more of a tech background. And then obviously, you created Enterflow. Can you talk about what perspective that you could add tips, I guess, to be a better salesperson, especially in the solar space? Honestly, when I was having my most success as a sales rep, I just go up and I would just have a free conversation with them. I didn't have a sales pitch. My pitch was like, hey, you've heard about solar. You haven't gone to solar yet. Solar isn't the way that all the stories that you've heard. Take a minute or two to catch me up to speed on why you haven't gone to solar yet. 
like to help you. These are the benefits. And if I can't, no big deal. But at least then I would give them a pitch. I would be like, hey, look, if you meet with me, at least I'll teach you this stuff and I'll let you know one way or another, this is something that will work for you. And if it doesn't, I will actually teach you how to get rid of people like me way faster. Mm -hmm. You're like, cool. And so that was my pitch. And I would just ask him and then I'd go look at their meter and just shout with them. And it was really successful for me. When you're, again, it depends on the sale type. If you're on a door, you got to create a relationship and you got to create trust as fast as possible. I did a lot of that by I'm getting them away from that front door. So I would actually go to the meter as fast as possible. And if they followed me over there, then I had a real good shot at closing them. If they'd let me inside their house, sit at their table, it's the only reason they were closing is that they tell credit. But it really, it's just like focusing on what does the customer want and not trying to just jam a one size fits all. So I love the broker approach and yeah, I can sell us to know or or you want a sun run or this, that. But I don't ask them like what products they want. I ask them questions of what kind of tax liability do you have? How long are you going to be in the hole? <laughs> and then like, you know what? This product seemed really good for you. And because I was asking them questions and they were answering, that really worked well for me. But I think for a sales rep, work I'm creating, one, staying away. Obviously doing residential sales of solar is different from building a platform and getting residential installers to come onto the platform. Like, how do you think you're able to get so many, like you were talking about SPI and you thought you would only get three or four partners and you ended up having 80. How does that happen? Because even 80 with a three-day conference, that's a pretty high close rate and high number of people that you're talking to. I don't know. We just try to work hard and be honest and do our best and provide a really good product. A lot of our naysayers out there, people that don't like our products, maybe there's people that don't like me. I don't know. I think one of the big things at SPI is we show rep experience, customer experience, the installer experience, and the setter's experience. And we said, when the setter does this, how it changes these screens. And so we showed in real time what was happening with everyone else. Sure. That communication. And so that was our big thing. And then now it's because, you know, in the industry, everybody, they've seen us or heard about us somewhere because they'll work at Vivid or they'll work at another company and then they'll move because there's a lot of cannibalization in the city. <laughs> Not a lot of growth of new people. Sure. It's up people just changing world, changing companies. So mm-hmm. someone used to see her when they come over here and like, well, I liked Interflow and the path was cool. So I want to use them over here. So I don't know. That, that's kind of a lot of our growth probably has come from that and that we've got some tools and approach that based off of our integrations. We're integration first and partnered first. And because of that, I think those are probably the two main reasons why we get the business that we get. Yeah, definitely. That's really helpful to understand. I appreciate you breaking it down. As a leading authority in the solar industry, life gets very busy. In addition to traveling the world as a speaker and for my entrepreneurial ventures, I'm a son, friend, investor, and entrepreneur. And when it comes to delivering a great sounding show for my listeners, I choose Podcast Laundry. All I have to do is record and send and the rest is done. They do the dirty work of podcasting for me. Yes, social media graphics, quotes, show notes, master editing, and much more. All I have to do is record. So if you're a busy podcaster like me with an engaged audience and want to free up your time to do more of what you love like going to the gym or spending time with loved ones go to podcastlaundry.com to schedule your consultation or call 347-871-8273 that's podcastlaundry.com or 347-871-8273 obviously the company was started in 2019 when pat officially came on board full-time what are your future goals of the company and then also What are some trends that you're seeing from your perspective as the company related to solar that would be interesting to the audience? So more goals for Interflow is it's fun to build a company and have people and create your own culture. And that's rad. And we have a great time doing it. A lot of people will build cars. I give this example because they want to sell them. A lot of people build companies so they want to sell them. And I'm not saying that we won't sell one day, but... One of the things that we do is we're trying to build a vehicle so that we can take it, use it to work, to do stuff, take us somewhere. And so there's some Native American projects that we're really keen on doing. And there's uh, LMI, low to moderate income projects that really the industry doesn't touch right now. I'm not profit projects, like all those churches out there that want to get solar. There's just so many different projects out there that we're really excited about. And as we build out the network, we'll be able to help in those regards. But like you got the nonprofits over in one hand, right? They got big hearts, but got no checkbooks. And then you got the for-profit companies that don't have hearts, but they have big checkbooks. And so we're trying to be a blend between the two. We've got a purpose and a mission, and we're really focused on that. That's kind of what it gets us up in the morning. We might not change the world, but maybe we'll change our community. You're leading with impact and passion, right? And that also impacts other people. So the other thing that we are also passionate about is just 
living the American dream. There's just so many people out there going and starting businesses. It's like, hey, you know what? If you have got the work ethic and you've got integrity, then let us give you the tools to help you be successful and to make a good living. Not only deploy more solar and promote renewable energy throughout the country and get us to hit our renewable energy goals and everything else we want to do, but also to stimulate the economy and to create great jobs and you know, how people have built better lives. And so that's something that we're really passionate about as well. Do you have any plans to do internationally? We've got a lot of international inquiries and best international groups that are ready to partner. There's a few things we have on our roadmap that we want to finish up over the next 12 to 18 months. We just want to make sure we have the right foundation before we get going. That's great to know. And then did you always want to be an entrepreneur or it just kind of happened? It sounded like you didn't want to work for the man anymore. I've actually only worked at one or two companies, my whole line that's been a regular non-startup. I haven't worked at startups. My dad's an entrepreneur. He owns 17 patents. I was just raised in that thinking and environment. And so our kind of one of our mantras at Interflow is like, someone's got to do it. So might as well be us. And I think a lot of people think, who's doing this? Can I get a job there? And our mentality was like, why don't we just make it? Let's just build it. But I've been a part of a lot of failed startups and learned a lot of wonderful things, great lessons. I just love being an entrepreneur. Those who want to be an entrepreneur, man, it's crazy. You guys think that solar coaster is crazy? The entrepreneur coaster is freaking nuts. I mean, it's so yo-yo. I feel like I'm bipolar now and I need to go see it. <laughs> I mean, it's so bad, but it's an illness too because I love it. I remember there was a specific day, two or three years ago. I was like, oh my gosh, I wouldn't tell Pat or my wife, one of the two. I was like, we're worth $20 million right now. We just signed this contract, we're worth 20 million. And then later that day, I was like, yeah, we're going to go make runnings. No, I know the feeling. It's so freaking crazy. So if you don't love that, then go work for somebody else. If you love that, go start a business and then God bless. Well, I think you brought up a great point. Like, how do you deal with the ups and downs of entrepreneurship? Because what you said is something that I think every entrepreneur experiences. And it's very difficult, especially when you first have your own company, to deal with that. How were you able to get through those times back then or even now? There's a couple. I don't think there wasn't a silver bullet. I am a very amazing spouse. She's very supportive. So you were there for the pregnancy of the second son, right? Well, yeah, the second one, the second and third child, I was there. Well, okay. <laughs> yeah. He's really supportive. And that was the big, big piece. Staying focused on what matters most and just being focused on that. Like, hey, this is what we're trying to do and stay focused on that. And I also sleep. You need some, but sleep is important. It's 82 degrees actually in my office. So I just put the air oh conditioner. No, I was like sweating. I'm like, what's going on here? Something is wrong. But like sleep is a bit, as funny as it sounds, I was joking with you, but sleep is a big piece because a lot of decisions, you just sleep it off or you're going to have a heart attack. Just sleep it off, wake up in the morning, say how you feel. Also meditation, prayer, those are big things for me. Put all those together, surrounded by a great team. So like some days I'm like, this, this is too hard. He's like, good. And then other days, you know, there's other people on our team. They're like, this is too not Spencer. And we kind of balance each other out and you have your support network. But that's really staying focused on what you're trying to do and if you're passionate about it enough and you've got good partners and team members and you'll be able to weather pretty much any. That's great advice. Like how many hours do you try to sleep a day? Yeah, I try to get eight, but it's my equipment tells me I get six. That's what I try to do. We work in 60 hours, 70 hour weeks all the time, but I try to work probably in the 50 to 60 hour week, which is a lot better. At this point, I'd like to get to 40 hour week. That'd be cool. So yeah, that would be awesome. It's interesting. I don't know how actively you've been following the new federal legislation that was signed by President Biden. Do you have an opinion of that legislation? I know you're more of a co-founder and salesperson, not really like a policy person. I do. I do have a lot of opinions out, which you'll get to know on our other podcast we're doing. <laughs> you know, and I are doing another podcast. We've already got, we'll drop a little teaser trailer. We're going to deep on Spotify and get your checkbook out. So yeah, and an interesting thing, the Twitter thing too, which I think you might go into at the same Yeah, I mean, I have a lot of opinions on everything, but when it comes to the legislation, I like it and I don't like it. That's my wife. She's like, yes. What do you think? She's like, yes and no. I'm like, that's a dummy answer. Don't hedge your bets. Just give me yeah. a solid answer. But here's the reason why I like it. I like it because it shows dedication. I mean, I don't care if you're a climate warrior, a fiscal warrior. I don't care if you're a prepper, you're a doomsdayer, like wait for zombies. I don't care what it is. 89% of Americans love solar. They want renewable energy, yeah, no. become energy dependent, whatever it is. And so from that perspective, I think it's great that we're um, making things. It's, it's more on the forefront. It's a focus. I think that's cool. Mm -hmm. Things I don't like about it, it's going to sound weird, but I actually don't like that they re-up the tax credit to 30%. This is the reason why this might be controversial and I'll get hate mail or whatever. I don't know. But the reason why I don't is because I think engenders and promotes 
bad players with bad behavior. For sure. I was actually looking forward to the day that it goes away because if you look at average sales reps commission today, it's 26%. Yeah. Weird. That actually just in line with what the tax credit is. And I'm not ragging with salespeople. I've made my career out of being in sales, not saying that. But it's like, if that went away, everybody would have to get better. Yes, there would be some pretenders that would fall off. I get it. But guess what? That's for the better of the industry and better for the end user, which is my house, your house. So I actually don't like it for that reason because I think it's a massive crutch that allows and promotes waste. And so that's the reason why I actually don't like it. I love some of the other things that the hell they're including, all these other things in the home for renewable energy and saving electricity, those kinds of things. Yeah. I really like that. But when it comes to that, I'm actually, that's something that I would have been fine if it went away. But I think we could crush it without it. I don't think we need it. But I think every energy asset except solar has some sort of incentive. I mean, solar does have incentives, but you know, where there's constant legislative change for incentives. So I don't know. It's important, right? I think it's Incentives are necessary to prime the pump, to get it going. But if it's going to have a life of its own, then you've got to get rid of incentives. Take that money that you would have used here and do something else now that's important. If you're constantly providing incentive for every single thing out there, then what is our economy built on? Incentives or is it built on an actual proven lot and a proven industry? Solar doesn't need it because it's been primed. I think solar does need it. It's from a residential perspective. There's a lot of margin that could basically handle like a no ITC. But I think when you talk about utility scale or some of the commercial projects. I, I would take that residential stuff like it's more on utility scale where I'd love to see more community solar. Like take that stuff and put it into those areas where it's needed. I don't think it's needed in residential solar. No, I don't think so as well. And as you said, this, the customer acquisition costs, which includes the commission of the salesperson is pretty high right now. And it seems like it's mirroring the ITC, which is a great point to mention. I think the other thing too is standalone storage. Having a 30% ITC is a big opportunity. Not right there. That is a perfect example of where we should be putting those kinds of funds and those yeah. kinds of resources. Hey, let's deploy a lot of more batteries and better batteries. Let's do that. That helps with microgrids and everything else. Like that's what we need. Let's put our efforts there. Let's put our effort in deregulating a bunch of crap. Like the permitting process is insane. In Australia, they don't have permits. I'm not saying let's go all freaking wild west here. It's already the wild west in the solar industry. By the way, Spencer, even with this 30% ITC, there's so many people coming into the solar industry. There'll be a lot of companies that go bankrupt. That's what we've seen all through the solar coaster, even when incentives are strong. My personal opinion, they don't know how to run business. Yeah, that's true. Like people are like, hey, well, I can throw some solar panels up there or I could sell it, but they're not capitalized right or they just don't run their business right. That's something we're really passionate about with Interflow is we actually provide a consulting service. We actually consult you on how to run your business because a lot of these guys are roofers or electricians or sales guys to yeah. business owners like, cool, do you know how to run a business? And how do you do inventory and job costing and all these other things? How do you do that? Our service we provide to our clients, our co-partners, we will actually consult them because we want them to be around. We want to double the amount of solar every single year to hit President Biden's goals for 2030. We have to have very healthy, strong solar installer companies. We have to. Is Enerflow in attending RE Plus? Anaheim or California with your yep. beloved LA Angels. <laughs> Angels, how dare you? Yeah. We'll be there. We've gone to three or four other RE Plus events throughout the year. I think this is our fifth or sixth one. Oh, wow. Uh, so yeah, we'll 100% we'll be there. We'll have 10 by 20 booths. It's going to be legit. We're going to show off a few new things. Every show we try to show off something new. Um, we're constantly developing, constantly releasing new stuff. Mm -hmm. So we're really looking forward to it. It's going to be a lot of fun. If our audience, who we call the Solar Mavericks, the inspiration for the Solar Maverick podcast was Top Gun and Maverick, what is the best way for them to learn more about Enerflow and specifically about you, Spencer? I don't know how much you want to know about me. But if you want to learn about Interflow and go to interflow.com. That's E N E R F L O.com. You can learn a lot about it. What we do is called the BPA, Business Process Analysis. We'll actually analyze your business for you for free. And for lead generated, all the way to PTO, we'll analyze and track that lead. Every text message, every email, all of these different things, we do a process with our platform consultants. And they'll actually help you get a vision of what your business looks like. You can learn a lot about your business that way. And then what we try to do is see, hey, is there somewhere that we can help you? And if there's not, then great. You've got a free business process analysis. But if there is, then we're happy to work with you. If you're not, I take that back. We're not happy to work with everyone. I just am tired of and really entitled, needy groups. And all they do is just light people up and they're demeaning. If you're demeaning and you don't have a good social and human skills, don't look at my website. Don't talk to me. Don't talk to Interflow. 
We don't want to work with you. That's a simple one. I appreciate but, you being transparent like that. We got so many people are complete. These are sons and daughters and husbands and wives. And well, I don't got time for people to freaking be punks to them and make them cry and make them hate their lives. No, you know what? Do you want to be a punk like that? Go do it somewhere else. There's other software companies that would work with you. We want. So there's that. But then if you come to SPI and then you can set up a time beforehand, book a time with us where we can come to one of our hotel suites. That sounded weird, but yep. you can demos there. <laughs> um, you can also see us on the floor. We also rented an Airbnb house that's got like an arcade and a bunch of other cool stuff. You can also hang out there as well. That's how you can learn more about us for sure. And are you purely focused only on residential or do you do commercial industrial utility scale? Today we're crushing residential. We do a little bit of light commercial. So basically anything you can do with today's residential design tools, like warehouses or small church building or big church, whatever, you know, kind of let us that tweet age where you go on commercial, but there's that one where you can still do it on Aurora or something like that. We can do those with you, but really we're just focused on residential. So if you do that other stuff, yeah, we could probably help you with a couple one-offs, but if you're residential, then you want to talk with us. We support EPCs, we fully integrated sales dealers. I mean, anything that's done residential, selling over the phone, in person, Zooms. I mean, any way that you could sell it, we support all of them. Yeah, that's helpful to know. And this has been a really good, great interview. Is there anything else that you would like to talk about? What's your favorite book, Spencer, to read? Essentialism. Oh, I've read this book. Yes. This is like, I mean, I read the Bible, but it's like, and I work Bible. I really love this book. It's legit. The concept is like good, better, and best. If you want to make your highest level of contribution as a human being, whether that's father, you play in sports, or whatever it is. If you did spend all your time doing good things, You'll never have enough time to do the better or the best things in your highest level of contribution. And so like, that's true. You can fill your day up with all the good things in the world. And that will actually impede you from doing the thing that will make them move the needle the most. Like I've got employees. This happens to me all the time. It's like, I'll come home and wife's like, hey, how was your day? And I was like, I was super busy. She's like, yeah, what'd you do? And I was like, I actually don't know. So busy. <laughs> and I just stayed busy. Then I asked myself, did I move the needle? I'm like, no. If you have those days, you're doing it wrong. I do it wrong all the time. So I'm like pointing fingers at you. You got to move the needle. And if it's not moving the needle, then you just waste your time. For sure. Yeah, that's great advice. And everyone's now talking about meditation. Can you talk about like how you meditate or do you use an app, something on YouTube or? Yeah, I'm actually always trying to learn. So if you've got meditation hacks that don't involve sleeping on Zoom calls, then I'm really interested. So that's my common thing, actually. I meditate during Zoom calls. I remember everything that you said and then have follow-up questions. <laughs> Meditation, I'm always wanting to learn more about that. I think it's such a really cool thing that we don't do enough as a society. One of the things I found works really well for me, I drive in silence. I don't turn on the radio. Oh, interesting. Calls, I drive in silence. And because I'm watching and pay attention to the road, especially like road trips, it takes that, you know, a forward brain or whatever, and then I have to focus on that. And then it like unlocks everything else. And I'll drive from California to Utah or Utah to Oregon, and I won't turn on the radio or get anything for a minute. But it's just complete silence the whole time. You know, my greatest thoughts actually come when I close my eyes and in the shower. The shower is good. I think that is a really great place. Steam rooms. But I also found another weird one. Can't tell, I probably have ADD or ADHD. I don't know. Self-diagnosed. I would go and sit in my car in the garage. No, I won't turn the car on and roll down the windows or whatever. I just sit in there and I just sit. I'll get up at like five in the morning and I'll sit in there for an hour or two. It's completely silent. And I just sit there. A lot of people will do breathing exercises. I've tried that. I feel like I just hyperventilate and then like pass out. I just follow my train of thought. And because it's quiet and I'm there and it's purposeful, there's some cool stuff that's happened there. But I like to find a really good way to do it within like 15 to 20 or 30 minutes, not have to spend two or three hours of my day trying to unwind. I have a solution for you. What is it? There's two apps I would recommend, Calm and Headspace. Their meditation apps and yeah. they basically focus on different things. Initially, they start at three minutes and they go to 10 to 20 to more than that. I do that actually first thing in the morning. It's crazy to me because in the beginning, when I started doing this four years ago, I couldn't sit for three minutes. Now I could easily do 10 minutes, 15 minutes, like it's nothing. Obviously, it's always challenging to bring yourself back to the breath, right? Because your mind is like running in a hundred different directions as like an entrepreneur. But definitely like I'd recommend to you and to the audience, and I've recommended this in the past, which was surprising to me because I got feedback, like people started using Headspace because yeah. I mentioned and calm on the interviews. So would you say Headspace over Calm or like if you had to pick one? 
I just started Calm recently. Our marketing guy, Lee Wang, uses Calm, but I pretty much have done almost every meditation at Headspace. And I don't want to redo the same ones over. So I just started Calm. And it's different. I like the interface better than Headspace, but I'm used to the meditation teachers. Andy, who started Headspace, I'm so used to hearing his voice. It's kind of crazy when people tell me that they're so used to hearing my voice. You know, they've listened to the podcast. Just like, why don't we have our podcast? So definitely try that. You go on YouTube as well. Really? No, I stay away from YouTube. Good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it will suck me in. It will suck me in like Netflix. And ne- That's true. Oh my gosh. YouTube sucks me in all the time. And we go into that in our other podcasts about how the social media and other platforms are basically creating content to keep you on their platform. This has been an amazing interview, Spencer. I really appreciate your time. I think our audience will have a lot of value from it. Every person has a mental condition that's undiagnosed, especially entrepreneurs. Just I'm so far on the spectrum, probably several different spectrums. <laughs> yeah. But I think there has to be an awareness in the entrepreneurship community. And I've seen it more and more talked about mental illness, mental issues that the community is going through. You know, unfortunately, I don't think people talk about it as much as they should be. So I appreciate you mentioning that because I think like a lot of what you were saying, I related to, especially like those days that I'm like in the morning, like, oh my gosh, we're going to be this big company. Then later in the day, you're like, I don't know if we're going to survive. I mean, it's just the crazy stuff. But I think every entrepreneur has dealt with that constantly. You know what I mean? I mean, if we're being honest, it takes a toll on you. I mean, for sure. And a real toll. I don't care how strong you are or what your foundation is. I mean, it's a battle. It takes a toll on you. And if you're not careful, it can, it can chew you up and Yeah, definitely. And I think that's the most challenging part of entrepreneurship is mentally how you handle situations and how you're able to overcome it. I think that's a whole other topic for our next podcast. Yeah, for sure. Spencer, this has been a great podcast. Thank you for your time again. I think you added a lot of value for our users. I love your platform. So easy to use. And I hope our listeners, our Mavericks, check it out. And thank you again for being on the podcast. Thanks for listening to the Solar Maverick Podcast. The Solar Maverick Podcast is brought to you by Renew Energy. We're a solar development and consulting firm. If you believe that this podcast is adding value to you, please give us a five-star review and share with those that you think could benefit from this information. Please email all questions, suggestions, and feedback to info at renewenergy.com. That's I-N-F-O at R-E-N-E-U energy.com. The Solar Maverick podcast is produced by Podcast Laundry and executive produced by Benoit Thangen and Kevin Y. Brown. 